Welcome to Authentic Walk with God. For our discussion today, let us shift gear a little bit and discuss the most important decision a person can make in life. And that decision is the decision to follow Jesus Christ. The topic today is the danger of procrastination. The danger of procrastination. I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. I read, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lambs but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lambs. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lambs. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lambs are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with them to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Procrastination is a deadly disease. There are individuals who never get ready for anything. At home, they are late for everything. In the church, they are late. And in society, either going to school, work, or market, they are always running late. To make things worse, they are never completely ready with their preparations at home. You always see them uh, buttoning their shirts or trousers along the road or in the car, try, tying their hair ties or putting on their uh, makeups and uh, along the road or in their car. Sometimes they run back into the room more than three times to pick one forgotten thing or the other. Most of these people miss the opportunities from time to time if they miss examinations and job interviews and some other things, scheduled things. In the church, they miss Sunday school lessons and uh, even sermons. Uh, during the week, they come late to Bible study in their various organizations, uh, some other meetings of the organization, uh, and including committee meetings. Uh, when confronted, they profile one reason or the other to justify their lateness. If it is not their husbands, it is their wives. If it is not someone who is visiting from the village or from the township very early in the morning, it is power holding or electricity company which did not allow them to iron their clothes or the water board which kept water from running so they could not uh, you know, uh, take their baths or maybe their generator did not work and so they couldn't pump water in their uh, from their boreholes and, and get on water. Laziness, lack of commitment, misplaced priority are sisters and brothers of procrastination. Let me tell you something. Apart from its costly physical consequences, procrastination has devastating spiritual uh, consequences. And that is life in hell. For those who always postpone the day of their salvation 
I'd like for you to listen to this passage I'm going to read from, from, from the scripture, and that is uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Uh, I will read the first six verses. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and deaths, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Where people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are, as, who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. In the passage uh, we are talking about today, I'm, I'm talking about Matthew, the Matthew passage where we have read about the, the ten virgins. Jesus, in a parable, talks about what it takes to enter heaven. Principally, it takes meeting Jesus personally to make it to heaven. But before a person meets Jesus, that individual must decide to meet Jesus, to meet him. And this decision must be made by this individual. Nobody makes this decision for anybody. You make it yourself, personally. For those of you who have the desire to follow Jesus Christ, but who allow the things of this world uh, to make them delay their decision to follow Jesus Christ, I'd like to recommend to you Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62 to read it when you have time. It is important. So what are the dangers of procrastination? Remember, we're talking about, you know, the danger of procrastination. So what, what, what are the dangers of procrastination? I'm going to mention a few of them. One, hidden the devil's instructions and insinuations. For example, you are too young to give your life to Christ. The devil will tell you that. I'd like for you to taste more of life. Religion is for the weak, the poor, and the uneducated. Some people tell you this, and the agents of Satan. Secondly, loss of opportunities for salvation. Yes, it is true that God knows that you will be saved, but you must cooperate with God for your salvation to come true. If somebody prepares a delicious meal and presents it to you, if it will take you to eat it. It will not automatically become yours until you accept that food. It will not nourish your body until you eat it. This is this, the way it is with our salvation. God has made the provision, but we must accept his provision. And we find this in John chapter 3 verse 16. The third thing here I want to talk about is loss of trust. People who procrastinate hardly gain trust from well-meaning individuals. And this is because they are unpredictable. They promise and fail and sometimes refuse to take responsibility for their actions, I mean their failures. In many cases, uh, they feel at home with uh, lateness, absence, and even outright disappointment. Of, 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 of others, or other people. Among the ten virgins in the passage of today's reading, five were prepared for the wedding ceremony, while the other five were not. Ready people always are prepared people. They arrange the events of their lives in their order of priority. They take responsibility for both their mistakes and their right actions. They hardly complain and, and they do not blame others for their negative behavior. On the other hand, procrastinators are never prepared for any assignment and they are quick to blame others for their mistakes. And they, you know what? They end up becoming miserable and sad when they fail to get on top of things. 
And let me conclude this short uh, discussion this way. You see, the five foolish virgins took the bridegroom and the wedding ceremony for granted. They even relied on the other five virgins for kerosene for their lamps. They were so foolish that they used the time they, they would have used to buy kerosene to engage in worthless discussion. At last, they lost. The door was closed against them, and nobody was waiting for their knock. How is your relationship with God? Do you take God for granted? I know you have been in the church for many, many years, or you have not been in the church, or whatever you've been preferring uh, in excuses, uh, and, and, and people, church people are pretenders, they don't know anything, they talk about God, but they don't practice anything. I'm talking about you as an individual, because everybody will go to heaven or hell as an individual. It's not going to be a mass, you know, going. So how committed are you, if you're a Christian, to the things of God? And if you're not a Christian, how much time do you think you still have to deceive yourself uh, in the things of this world, thinking that the world belongs to you and uh, 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 nothing will, 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 will come to an end? You'll be here forever. Deeply committed or shallow, shallowly committed? If you're a child of God, are you deeply committed? Or your practice of Christianity is, is shallow. You come to church because of people. You do things because you want to be praised. Or are you committed to Jesus? And, and you don't care who, who takes note of what you do or who sees you or who does not see you. You don't even care about people's affirmation. All you want God, all, all you want to do is to please God who has who has called you to be his child. Do you think God will open the door to heaven for you at last? Or are you in doubt? If you have not given your life to Jesus, you may be a pastor, you may be a church leader, you may be a member, you may be a committee member, you may be a deacon or an officer in the church. If you have not given your life to Jesus, sorry, you will not make heaven. No matter how highly placed you are in this world, it's only when you follow Jesus by accepting him as your Lord and Savior and allowing him to lead you every step of the way in this Christian pilgrimage that you will make heaven. Do not procrastinate. Do it now if you've not given your life to him because tomorrow is not promised to you. May the Lord bless you as you do it. And uh, may you never, never postpone it again if you have not done it. And if you have done it, continue to serve the master until he comes back. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful week. And until next, next week, this is your brother and friend, Peter Lemadendong Wachuku. Director of Center for Family Life and Pastoral Care, Owere, Nigeria.